Welcome back to Life as God Intended. Today, we're addressing a topic that affects the lives of so many. Destructive behaviors. Too often, when we think of these repetitive behaviors, people may focus on drugs, alcohol, overeating, or lust. But in reality, a hang-up can take on many forms. And at its core, these hang-ups or destructive temptations, as I'm referring to them, are the result of a deep, unmet need, a longing for connection and love and purpose. But as followers of Christ, how can you and I respond to those struggling with these destructive behaviors? And how can we love them well? And what role does God's love play in their healing process? The surprising truth is that the answer goes beyond sobriety. So many think that from somebody just to withstand from the destructive hang-up, that that's the goal and that they've achieved victory. But it's far deeper than that. It's about the transformative power of love and connection. And in this video, we're going to explore how destructive behaviors are often a cry for the connection that we were designed for. A connection that only God's unconditional love and healthy relationships can provide. I'll share with you some compelling examples, including a fascinating study that sheds light on the roots of these hang-ups and how love and community can bring about real healing. So stay tuned as we unpack how we can reflect Christ's love to those battling with these hang-ups and offer them hope for genuine transformation and freedom. Destructive behaviors, often referred to as addictions, are some of the most painful struggles a person can face. Whether it's substance abuse, compulsive behavior, or even the addictive grip of sin itself, it's a battle that many fight alone. And yet the Bible reveals something profound. At the heart of these destructive hang-ups is a need for love and connection. A need that only God and healthy relationships can truly fill. For many, these negative behaviors are tied to deep emotional pain, depression, loneliness, and feelings of worthlessness are often the driving forces. For instance, depression can lead individuals to use substances like alcohol as a form of self-medication. This creates a cycle where the substance abuse worsens and so does the depression deepen and along with it there's a deepening sense of loneliness which all started with the depressive loneliness that a person's struggling with. But the gospel offers a path to real healing both for those struggling with the destructive behaviors and those who love them. Through God's grace, we can extend 
the unconditional love of God, even when it feels difficult. So, how do we offer this kind of love in the face of destructive behaviors? And what does the Bible say about dealing with depression and loneliness that often fuel these patterns? Destructive behaviors take many forms, but at their core, they are a manifestation of sin. Jesus said, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin in John 8, 34. Whether it's substances like drugs or alcohol or other unhealthy behaviors, these hang-ups trap people in a cycle of seeking fulfillment apart from God's design. But here's the truth. Loving someone in destructive behavior doesn't mean enabling their actions. It means extending grace, just as God extends grace to us. The Bible teaches us to bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2. Loving someone through their struggles means standing by them with Christ's unconditional love, regardless of whether or not they change on our timeline. Often, destructive behaviors are fueled by loneliness and disconnection. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, God declared, it is not good that man should be alone. We were created for community and relationship. But in today's world, it's easy for people to become isolated. The Bible reassures us that God makes a home for the lonely. Psalm 68 verse 6, showing that healing is found in connection and love, both by God and others. Even science points to this truth. In the famous Rat Park study, researchers found that rats in isolated environments turned to drugs to fill the void. However, when placed in a connected enriched environment, their need for drugs dramatically decreased. The same principle applies to us as humans. Consider the Vietnam War veterans who became addicted to heroin. Despite their destructive behavior, 95% stopped using drugs when they returned to a loving, supportive, environment. They went from an isolated, terrifying setting to one filled with love and acceptance, and their destructive behaviors lost their grip. At its root, destructive behaviors are a longing to fill an inner void. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 13, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and have hewed them themselves out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. You see, when people try to fill their emptiness apart from God, they end up broken, and unsatisfied. Destructive behavior is an attempt to fill that emptiness, but it will never satisfy. What is the role of depression and loneliness when it comes to repetitive destructive habits? Well, before any sinful habit takes hold, 
there's often a deeper emotional or spiritual void. Depression is a key factor driving many towards unhealthy decisions. For example, many turn to alcohol as a coping mechanism for depression. But alcohol only worsens symptoms and deepens isolation. Much of this depression stems originally from loneliness, a feeling of being isolated, unloved, and unseen. God's created us for connection. We were made for relationship, first and foremost with Him and then with others. Loneliness, when left unaddressed, can drive us to seek connections in unhealthy places, including developing repetitive, destructive behaviors. As Christians, we are called to offer not just a superficial love, but a deep, unconditional love that reflects Christ's heart. How should a Christian respond to depression and loneliness? Well, first, admit to yourself. Recognize that you are feeling depressed and lonely. There's no shame in acknowledging your humanity. God accepts you, no matter how gloomy you feel. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Psalm 147.3. Second, have faith in God's presence. Faith isn't the absence of difficulty. It's trusting God in the midst of it. Remember his promise. Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Matthew 28. 20. Third, confession and forgiveness. Destructive behaviors often bring guilt, but 1 John 1 9 reminds us that if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive and cleanse us. And finally, number four, hope in God's activity. God's promise of preservation gives us hope. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians 1.6. In conclusion, God created us with a basic need for love and relationship. We're social creatures meant to experience interaction and not only with one another, but with God himself. Through Christ, we are invited into the ultimate relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it is through this divine connection that we learn how to love others well. True healing from destructive behaviors begins with understanding that we are loved unconditionally by God. Romans 5.8 reminds us that God commendeth his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This divine love isn't dependent on our performance, and it's this kind of love that transforms our lives, especially those struggling with destructive behaviors. As Christians, we are called to reflect this love. We are invited to create environments where people experience connection, feel valued and understood that they are never alone. 
destructive behaviors lose their power when love takes root and community is formed. If you know somebody struggling with destructive behaviors, commit to being a source of unconditional love and support in their lives. Pray for them, encourage them, and remind them that they are not alone. Create an environment where they feel loved and valued, not judged or isolated. Ask God for the grace to love them as he does unconditionally and without reservation. And if you're battling with destructive behaviors or depression yourself, know that God loves you deeply and desires to fill the void in your heart with his love. Reach out for help, not just to break free from these behaviors, but to connect with the one who created you for relationship. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest in Matthew eleven twenty eight. Let's be the church that loves without limits, offering the healing power of Christ's love to those in need. Share this message of love and grace and connection with those around you and trust that God will work miracles of healing and restoration in their lives. If you've benefited from this discussion today, please leave me your comments in the comment section below. Thanks for liking the video and sharing it and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Until next time, I'm praying for you that you would experience life as God intended.